A few years ago, we were doing marketing for this restaurant chain. It is a mid-end Chinese restaurant. We have just finished a campaign that did pretty well, so the owner was very open to new ideas from us. Because this restaurant is kind of known for its efficiency, so our team discussed and proposed this new idea for a campaign. 15 minutes or it's free. Basically, if you go to a restaurant and order the food, if it takes more than 15 minutes for the food to come, you get a free dish. So it's a sort of a guarantee of speed for the customer. It is an O2O, online to offline campaign, which means people would see the app online and claim the challenge offline at the restaurant. In order for us to track the results, they can scan a QR code at the table and fill in a form and the 15 minutes timer will start counting. This way, we'll be able to see how many people take up the challenge and what is the resulting increase in sales. I thought it was a brilliant idea and I was excited. We ran the campaign for about one month. You know what happened? The campaign flopped. It was a total failure. There were barely any increase in attributable sales. Not only that, there were several negative comments on our ads. The thing about comments on ads is that there will always be trolls who don't like whatever you do. But in this case, I think the comment really knew it on the head. The comment goes, If I want to eat fast food, I will go to McDonald's, not come here to eat. The other says, I want to eat good food, not fast food. Something like that. There were several other comments along the same lines. And I was like, that's so true, how can I not see the point? This campaign is not giving the target audience what they want. Of course, hindsight is 2020. it's easy to see that it is a lame idea after the fact. However, some homework before the campaign could have prevented the flop. Just taking the time to understand our target audience behavior could have been a lifesaver. In this case, for the visitors to the Chinese restaurant, they are prepared to wait. They go in a group, so they tend to chat while they are waiting and time is not an issue for them at all. They will not go to a Chinese restaurant just because they serve the food faster over there. Again, it's easy to say this on hindsight, especially when I personally prefer my food to be served fast. In fact, here's the problem, right? We always tend to assume that people are like us, but everyone has different preferences. So it's important to know what is the target audience's preferences, not our own assumptions. Every week, we release a new video talking about marketing, psychology, and business growth. Don't miss the videos, subscribe and press the bell notification so that when new videos are released, you will be notified. There are three main lessons in this incident that I want to share with you that will change the way you look at marketing and sales. Firstly, I don't used to believe in market research, spending the time to understand the target audience and the business USP and so on. I thought this is something that the MNCs with a lot of money will do in order to come out with a fancy report. It turns out that market research is compulsory, it is non-negotiable. I would go as far as to say that the amount of time you spend on research and planning should be the same if not more than the time you spend on the campaign itself. As Abraham Lincoln said, Give me 6 hours to chop down the tree and I'll spend the first 4 sharpening the axe. This is super true in the context of digital marketing. As entrepreneurs and business people, we tend to be action-oriented and have the just-do-it mindset. The idea comes and we just jump straight into it without much planning. We kind of fall in love with our idea and lose the logical judgement, which can be very costly in terms of money and time. How so? Well, let me give you an example. Let's say you want to get to a certain physical location and you rely on your instincts and your gut feelings to guide you there. You started walking and walking and after 20 minutes, you are getting nowhere. Then you turn to a stranger and ask, where is this ABC place exactly? And to the shock of your life, he points the other way that you came from. Then you found that you have been walking in the wrong direction for the last 20 minutes. Now you have to walk back to your original place and start from there again, which means you have to take another 20 minutes plus 20 minutes more to get there. If you have gotten the insight from the stranger before you started walking, you have reached the location by now. In the case of digital marketing, it's the same. Not getting insights about the target audience or collecting data from your campaign properly is like walking in the wrong direction. It will result in wasting budget and time. But market research doesn't mean you spend hundreds of thousands to engage a market research company. You can always do the basic fundamentals like talking to the sales team to gain more insights about customers. The big lesson here is to gain an understanding about the target audience before you run any campaign. What is their pain point, their criteria, their goals and so on. As simple as that. Second lesson is that your USP is not your USP. What do I mean? When we started discussing the campaign, this client told us that their USP is speed. This was why we went in that direction and came up with a campaign based on this particular USP. As we now know, speed doesn't work in this case because the audience doesn't value it. 
The thing is that just because you are good at something doesn't mean that your positioning or your differentiation should be based on that. Eventually, the business positioning should be at the intersection of the business USP and the target audience needs. We call this the real benefit. If you can identify the real benefit, you hit home run, period. Most businesses miss the mark. They either have a USP that doesn't meet target audience needs, or they have something that meets the needs but it's not entirely unique. The question is, does it mean that speed as a USP is useless? Definitely not. We tested the benefit of speed in many other industries. For example, this one is an aircon company. You can see in this ad, our headline is immediate aircon repair and the copy says, get your aircon fixed in one day. This ad converts very well. It works because this is what the target audience wants. Every market is different, every industry is different. Many a times we see businesses blindly copying each other's ads and expect it to work, but the audience is different. They respond to different things. It's not just speed that can be a differentiator. There are many potential USPs that you can use to attract customers. Your USP or differentiator doesn't have to be groundbreaking or revolutionary. It just has to be unique and be able to meet the needs of your audience. Let me share some proven examples. For IKEA and Scoots Airline, their differentiation is price, economical or budget pricing. And for Toyota, it is their fuel efficiency. Ultimately, the nature of marketing is that you still have to test, even though I emphasize the importance of market research. Your campaign may still fail even if research is done. Research only increases your chances of success, but ultimately is still subjected to testing on the ground. Marketing is about taking risks and trying new things. Nothing is certain. Many of the big companies tested different USPs before they finalized on something. Third lesson is this thing called direct response. I figured that aside from using the wrong differentiation, there was another critical reason why this campaign didn't work. We showed the ad on Facebook and we expected people to save the ad in their phone and go down to the shop to claim the challenge. It doesn't quite work this way. The reality is that even if people were interested in our promotion, they would have forgotten it by the next day. There are so many different ads, offers and promotion, not just on Facebook but everywhere in the world. An average person is bombarded with 5,000 advertisements every day according to studies. There are so many things trying to get our attention and not to mention we still have our daily chores and life commitments. It's impossible to expect people to remember to claim your promotion. We cannot expect people to take action on our ad one day after. This is why we need to do direct response. Simply put, direct response is about getting people to take action immediately as soon as they see your ad. They shouldn't take action one hour later or one day later, it should be now, immediate. Once they see your ad, there should be a clear call to action and persuasive copy to get them sign up immediately or purchase immediately. Direct response advertising is not easy. It requires you to persuade without actually talking to the person face to face. However, direct response is not new. It has been tried and proven since almost a century ago. It started off on direct mailers and it moved to the internet. But a lot of direct response principles created by the pioneers are still very relevant today. In fact, CNBC reported that direct response was one of the strongest areas of spend in Facebook and Google's advertising business during the pandemic. It was after this experience that we started diving very deep into direct response, understanding about the nuances, the characteristics and foundation of direct response. Today, we are now pretty hardcore practitioners of direct response thanks to this experience. We never look back because this thing works, it gives results. It's based on human psychology, which really hasn't changed much over the years. But at the end of the day, it depends on what you want. If you are running a campaign to increase brand awareness, then you will try to get more clicks and shares. But if you are running a campaign to increase sales, then direct response expertise is critical. For sure, market research is a must as well. If your direct response is backed up by solid market research, then you are good to go. Thanks for watching this video. Do like, subscribe and press the bell notification so that when new videos are released, you will be notified. I'll catch you soon.